Grant from grantthomas.com and this video is about the OWL Intuition System which I've been installing over the past few months that allows me to control my solar, my electricity consumption but also via mobile devices you can also control your heating and your hot water when you're away from home. I'm going to talk you through a few screens then we'll do a second video about how we installed the whole thing. So this is the web interface for the OWL Intuition system. OWL Intuition is essentially a gateway that you plug into your router at home and then you have a variety of sensors that provide a dashboard like this. I'm accessing this via the Safari web browser. It works on any PC or Mac on any web browser. Essentially it tells me that my weather locally is 15 degrees and partly cloudy and then you have a number of these panels. The first panel I've got here on the left tells me that the house is currently using 788 watts and that's costing me 3.1p an hour. So I simply type in what my per kilowatt hour rate is, I get that off my electric bill, and it tells me in real time what I'm using in terms of electrical consumption. It also has a view so far today how much we've used in terms of electricity, the cost as well as yesterday and the past week and over the past month. I can also download this at the bottom onto a spreadsheet, which is a CSV spreadsheet. And then there's also this great facility where you can see in real time, um, or I should say the historical usage over the past uh, days or over the past week, six months. And you can actually take it through into a one day view. If I click reload, you'll be able to see um, once that's just displayed here, how much electricity you've used. And I find this really useful because um, I was trying to reduce the amount of electricity, for instance, that we're using overnight. So for some reason, as I move my mouse along this graph, you'll see that at uh, 2.31 in the morning, uh, we're using 544 watts. So why we're using 500 watts when everyone's asleep and nothing is being used? That must just be a fridge or things on standby. And part of my focus over the next six months is to reduce that down to a standby of around 200 watts. So great for that kind of insightful analysis. So that's the first panel, which is electrical consumption. The next panel here is to do with my solar PV panels, my electric panels on the roof. It's overcast here at the moment. They're only generating 548 watts, 617. That means that we're exporting zero because right now the house is using 788. But this also gives me an insight into how much we've generated today, how much we generated yesterday, last week, etc. And this graph is a great one because you get to see how much you've imported, how much you are generating and how much you've exported. Now, if I put that onto a one day view again, and just show you what happened yesterday and I'll zoom in on this. So yesterday I can actually see that during the day, the green line is actually what we generated. The gray line is what we exported and then the orange line typically peaks in the evening is what we actually imported so when the ovens are on electric cars are plugged in etc uh, that goes up but what you'll also see here is a decent gap between the green and the gray and that's where i'm diverting all of that spare capacity into our immersion heater and heating up the hot water okay the final two panels here which i think the ones you'll find interesting are for controlling the heating and the hot water so this is basically a wireless thermostat that I have installed in our landing upstairs and it's currently 21.8 degrees. Now I could immediately press a button here that boosts that up to 22 degrees if this was winter etc. I could boost that but I can also uh, configure the settings that basically say what temperature it should be when it's on standby, when you're on holiday. And if I configure the time clock this is a far more precise way of controlling your heating. So if you think about the old clocks that you might have at the moment that are sort of half hour here, 15 minutes there, this allows you to actually say, you know, between 7 and 7.45 in the morning, heat to 20 degrees between half four in the afternoon until half nine, heat to 20 degrees. And you can actually specify that down to the minute and even down to the point degree um, of the actual temperature on the thermostat. And you can do this on a number of different um, settings. So if you're working from home or if you need a different background temperature, and you can even specify this over seven days. And once you've changed all this, you click on save to network out and then it's set. One of the great facilities here is you can actually control this uh, when you're away from home. So from your iPad and your iPhone, if you're about uh, to go out or for a long walk and you realize you're not going to get back in time and you don't want the house just heating up if you're not going to be not there for instance you can actually turn it off by clicking putting it on standby equally so you can actually say boost up the temperature because you're coming back early before the heating comes on so you can remotely control this and this dashboard is accessible from any connected pc any in the world so you could be sat in a hotel in singapore and seeing what temperature it is at home and making sure your pipes aren't freezing uh, also, you can actually see the heating graph, so you can see the historical perspectives, for instance. We don't have any heating on. This is being recorded on a mild day in September, but you can see exactly what the temperature was upstairs, if you like. So you can see the green line, then you can see 
the external temperature, so actually the the real-time external. This is taken from just a local weather monitoring station. So you stick in your postcode and it gives you the fact that it's 15 degrees in the local weather forecast. And what that's useful for is if it's a particularly cold morning and you're trying to get this up to 21 degrees by 7 o'clock, this will actually say, OK, it's minus 5 degrees outside, therefore I'm going to turn on the heating slightly earlier to make sure we get to 21 degrees by 7 o'clock. So it dynamically adjusts to external weather conditions. That is enormously powerful. So you can actually, I'm sure you've had the situations where you put the heating on in, let's say, October, then you've had a couple of cold mornings and then it's gone to a mild morning and all of a sudden you're opening windows and everyone's sweltering in the house because the heating's come on and it's been a mild day. This dynamically adjusts to that by monitoring the external conditions and making sure that the temperature comes up to speed in time. And the final panel is the hot water. I currently have this in the middle of my tank uh, because we have three thermostatic ports um, where I can put this on our tank. But this allows you, just like the central heating, to control your hot water. This really will save you some money. So you can actually specify the temperature. So most boilers just have a thermostat that says 60 degrees, heat it all the way up to 60 degrees and then shut it off. So you use a lot of energy, a lot of gas, heating it up to 60 degrees. And then you go and turn on a shower and mix it with loads of cold water and you didn't actually need it to be 60 degrees. So you could actually say, and these are defaults, I haven't changed it yet. Uh, heat it to 50 degrees in the morning when there's a lot of demand and you need to use a lot of hot water. But then in the evening, just throttle that back to 45 degrees because that's more than hot enough to have a shower, to fill a bath, to do the washing up. But you're not having to waste all that energy heating it up to 60 degrees only to cool it down again, so it's useful. And you can specify this to be at any temperature you want and at any time. And again, just like the heating, a seven-day clock and multiple uh, particular settings um, or times, I should say, um, per day. So you can save all that, adjust that, and save it to the network Al. Where I found this useful is certainly to look at the hot water graphs. And I have, obviously, renewable energy installed here. We have solar PV and solar thermal. And if I go back to yesterday, and let's just take a look at this particular section here, uh, which is going from 10 o'clock until 2 o'clock. And this here, this green chart going up, is all free hot water. So this is all being created by the solar PV and the solar thermal. So it allows me to see, OK, uh, we're up to 47, 49 degrees 50 in the middle of the tank. That means at the top it's going to be up at 60 degrees. So we've actually got enough hot water there to easily satisfy all of the hot water demands in the evening. So I don't need to turn anything on. Um, I, I get that kind of visibility into how well the renewable energy is performing before we have to start importing electricity or using gas to heat the hot water. And then finally, you get this insight into the um, kind of summary view. So how much you used electrically yesterday, how much solar was generated, also what the income is being generated from the solar and also things like CO2 that you've produced in the house. So this is the web interface. There are lots of options at the top for adding devices. Very simple to, like I have done, built this up over six months. I had the electric consumption first, then I added the, the solar PV monitoring, and then I've added in the last two weeks the ability to monitor the heating and hot water. And you simply go onto the wizard, add the devices. They're all wireless, so it um, simply detects them. And once it's paired with the gateway, then it's all viewable online. And I'll just show you now the uh, accessible app on the iPad and the iPhone. OK, so that was the dashboard. And what you're now seeing is uh, an iPad. And this is showing you the view which you'll get on the actual app, which is free on the iPad, on the iPhone. You can also get it from the Android store. And this is just the panels that you saw. You can basically swipe between them. So if I go that way, you see the solar, then you see the hot water, and then you see the heating. And if I click on this button at the bottom, which I'm trying to do back to front, so it's slightly challenging, you get control. So likewise, you can just click away and it puts the system into a way. Comfort boosts it up to the next comfort setting. So if it's due to come on at four o'clock and it's two o'clock, you press comfort and it basically jumps onto the four o'clock setting and keeps it going. Uh, standby puts the whole system in standby and boosts boost the temperature by one degree. And then there's the more hot water that basically takes it up to temperature. So you can be miles away from home and actually access and control your heating and hot water and also get visibility into your solar PV and electric. So that's the mobile app for both Android and for iPhone. Hope this has been useful. Feel free to check out the YouTube channel. Subscribe there, also on grantthomas.com, and this will be published to the Facebook blog. Take nothing for granted. If you've got any questions or requests, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.